What is one computer skill that you are surprised many people don't know how to do? A couple years ago my mom wanted to know how to better use computers, so she went to her class. She realized she didn't belong there when the first lesson was teaching people to use a mouse and some of them just couldn't figure it out. My mother went on a computer course run by an old people's charity organization which was literally called Where's My Stuff. She still can't find her stuff. She can do some things in the computer just fine but thinks you open files through Word. Gets absurdly angry and upset when files that are not in fact Word documents are missing. And claims that it used to work just fine. When she at some point switched from the right way to the wrong way. I just love that there are clearly enough of her out there that they ran a court like that. Considering the level of office work required in most corporate America, you'd be surprised by the number of people that don't even have the basic understanding of simple office software. As an IT manager and having dealt with a ton of people, this and their basic inability to operate a computer, like knowing what you're trying to log into, asking for your Google password to be reset and wondering why it doesn't work for your Windows login. Pretty much everything regarding Windows shortcuts. People don't realize using them would make their work so much easier, especially Ms. Word and PPT. If I'm on a web call with a colleague and we're putting together a presentation or a document or whatever and I have to watch someone else drive and they don't use keyboard shortcuts, it drives me to rage. Not kidding. I have to try to keep my mouth shut. Not learning to use them is just ridiculous. A recent phone conversation I had with my mother, me, you just need to copy and paste it, let me talk you through it, her, there's no point, I can't do it, me, it's like two key presses, her, it's too complicated, me, it'll take 5 seconds, it's easy, her, it's easy for you, your computer programmer, I don't have qualifications, me, so what are you going to do next time you need to copy and paste something? Her. I'll just put my laptop in the car and drive it over to your house and you can do it for me. Comma it's easy for you, your computer programmer. I don't have qualifications. Ask her how she managed to learn to drive a car without an engineering degree. Google effectively. Not just Google, but to find any meaningful information from Google. Let's say you have a computer issue. Your monitor is simply came unplugged from your PC. Many people might just Google why won't my computer work or computer won't turn on. Sure, that may eventually lead you to checking your monitor is plugged in correctly. But I bet if you Google PC turns on but no picture or PC turns on but no screen black screen you're gonna get a helpful answer much, much faster. And this goes for any kind of problem that you're Googling. Dishwasher not working comma Frigidaire model xxxx dishwasher stops after rinse cycle. You get the idea. Generally, the more granularity the better. Would like to add, being able to recognize a site on the Google result is sketchy or not and even going as far as looking up the URL for virus threats. Actually reading the error message, instead of just clicking OK or close whenever a window pops up. Happens a lot in IT support. I'll ask them to replicate their issue. They'll just click off all the windows. Me. Wait hold on. What did that pop up thing say? Them. I don't know. Me. Sigh. I work in the same field. When you finally get them to read the error message. Sometimes they'll say a summarized version of the message. I'm like B. I need the exact message. Word for word lol. Working in phone customer support, the number of times I've had an old person do a Google search for a web address instead of going to the URL has made me realize most middle-aged and elderly have no idea what a browser or address bar are. Type site URL into the address bar. I did. The page isn't here. 9 times out of 10 they were just on a Google page and I lost a week of life expectancy. To pair with this. The agitation when I ask them to read what they typed in the URL letter by letter, which inevitably reveals a typo. Like I'm the butthole for assuming you may have mistyped instead of it being a giant conspiracy my Comcast to keep you from reaching our support page. As a Geek Squad agent, my only answer is reading on screen instructions. There are a ton of people that, for some reason, when they read very clear instructions on what to do, like during the setup of a device, they just go clueless. And we're talking people going it says to click this box. What does that mean though actual quote btw? 
that while watching YouTube on PC, you can use J to go back 10 seconds, K to pause the video, and L to fast forward 10 second. Also comma and period to go frame by frame. Win plus shift plus S to mark an area to screenshot. I use it several times a day in my job and I've seen people instead press print screen and then paste the entire image into paint and then select the area they want it, 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 the area. I'll have to try that, as I am definitely one of those people. Control plus backspace to delete an entire word. Control plus arrow keys to move cursor word by word rather than character by character. Hold shift as well to select, then delete, change style, copy paste, whatever. Control plus del to delete word to the right. Control plus click to select sentence. Triple click to select paragraph. The simplest functions in Excel. Sums. Multiplication. Division. It's just not that freaking hard. People see spreadsheets and their brains just turn to mush, I guess. I've seen people take a column full of numbers in Excel and add them up manually and then type in the sum in the bottom cell. In college I watched a guy halfway across the room frantically taking numbers from Excel, entering them into the calculator on his phone then type the result back into the spreadsheet. How to change a sentence between upper and lower case in Microsoft Word, Outlook or PowerPoint. If you accidentally leave caps lock on, select the text and press shift plus F3 and will change it between upper case, lower case and title case. Wait that's actually super useful thanks. I was training a new 22YO co-worker and noticed a lot of her typing mistakes involved both the first and second letter of a sentence being capitalized. I inquired about it and her response was sometimes I don't turn caps lock off fast enough I was puzzled but kept it cool. I decided to watch her type a little later on and sure enough she would hit caps lock every time she needed a uppercase letter followed by turning caps lock back off. When I told her what the shift key did she was genuinely mind blown. She had just graduated college. I know a few people that use caps lock for capital letters. It drives me crazy and I have no clue why they choose to do it. People are generally pretty computer illiterate. I'm not a tech guy whatsoever but a basic understanding of crap will save you so much time. I used to work at a planet fitness and good god do the managers need basic training in computer skills. I was treated like a god for knowing how control plus f worked and having a basic understanding of snipping tool for printing out QR codes. They used to really push us to sell gym essential kits and when writing reports on how much they sold they would bring up the report and count one by one. I was a front desk guy and had to show my regional training manager that if you just press ctrl and f and type in an individual employee's name. However many times it came up minus one, it showed the employee's name one extra time, was how many they'd sold. This saved us hours over the course of a week. In typical manager fashion, he went ahead and took credit for this and promoted his real life friend who was bad at their job. Frick that place. I've never seen a company with that much incompetence at a manager wide level. I recently had a conversation with my girlfriend's mom about QR codes. She told me that someone in her company figured out a way to make a QR code direct to their website. Earlier this month I made a video for my GF for her birthday and put a QR code in her card that directed to the video on YouTube. So I told her I did the same thing, alluding to the video for her daughter's birthday. She was like you know how to do that stuff. I was like yay it literally takes less than 30 seconds by googling QR code maker and having the web address that you wanted to direct you to. Apparently the guy in the company that did it played it off like it was some big project he was working on all week and got praise from the president for it. Control plus C. So many people are completely unaware of very basic keyboard functions or that they even exist. And coming full circle with control plus V few things regarding IT illiteracy surprises me anymore. I am saying this as someone who has voluntarily spent thousand of hours helping people with IT and work as a software developer. I am more likely to be saddened than surprised at this point. I believe that most of our children are growing up on what's known as the iPad generation. Besides using Word and Excel, most of them do not know how to do much else. I work in a school, lots used iPads in primary school so don't know how to use a shift key on a computer, they toggle caps lock. 
I'm a high school teacher. Every time I would try to get my students to do the simplest task on the computer, they were completely lost. No idea how to cut copy paste, save a file, look for a doc, nothing. I was shocked at how computer illiterate they are for teenagers. Google how to fix their problem. Apparently I have some superpower where I see the error code or know the name of the software and a brief description of the problem and get helpful Google results with little effort. Everyone else seems to just say I don't know how to find that, and then treat me like some kind of mystical wizard afterwards. Second answer. Don't kill me please. Windows plus P opens a quick menu for mirroring extending or disabling second screen. People just get confused over multi-monitor projector setups way too often. Opening new tabs. In high school, some of my teachers would close the window, and then open another one to search for something else. They weren't even that old, like around their 40s for some of them. If someone meant to write in capitals they'd just delete and retype it whereas they could really just highlight the text and press shift and f3. I'll preface this by saying I work in IT. We get lots of people calling who say they don't know anything about computers. I'm fine with that as long as you reboot every night and know enough to do your job. The people that really pee me off are the people that can't plug up a computer. It's just shapes. Surely you learned that in kindergarten. Yellow rectangle goes in yellow plug. USB goes in blue rectangle plug. Ethernet goes in the one that looks like an ethernet jack. The monitor cable goes in the trapezoid plug. It was awful when we sent 900 people home during the height of COVID. No people can't do it. We've had to start color coding the back of the PCS. I had a lady give up a plug it into a power outlet when trying to help her set up a modem. Even after trying to explain it by describing an AC power outlet and plug she still said it was too much for her and her husband would call back. How are you 50 plus and get overwhelmed by plugging something into a power outlet? How is this something that has never occurred in your life? The shortcut to save on your keyboard. I save way more often since I learned it and as a result, lose way less work when the worst happens. Pretty much impulsively spamming control S every 10 seconds when I'm editing. Gonna reach the right limit on my SSD like a king. Cross referencing in word. Table of contents. Mail merge. Basically everything other than just typing. Excel. All of it. Not that I do super duper complicated equations. But there are people I work with who haven't so much as opened the application. Editing in PDF. As long as it's not a photo. Redacting in PDF. Changing a PDF to a Word doc. Reducing a PDF size. People in my office think I'm a computer genius. I'm not. What is a mail merge? My 12 year old was telling me yesterday how she always struggles to get to footer on a Word doc for her IC classes. She told me she can do the header okay but can never find the option for the footer. Her jaw dropped when I showed her you can just double click on that area of the page and it goes into footer header options lol she told me I can't wait to show my IT teacher this. I also remember showing this to my IT teacher years ago. I got told off and sent out for the lesson that day for being as smart as I was told. Guess who's doing the computing degree now though. I'm a computer tech with 20 plus years on the front line. The most ridiculous call I ever had, which prompted my other computer techs to come into my office to commiserate, as well as admire that I kept my cool for so long. I worked to explain for 10 freaking minutes where the windows start button was. I'm never surprised at the lack of knowledge of the end user. Proper shut down. You would be surprised by how many hold the power button until it's shut off, or just pull the plug, or use the power supply switch at the back of the computer. Yet Windows used to say that the computer wasn't properly shut down. And yet they are surprised that there is data corruption. Source. Me. Xtech. Basic troubleshooting. Apparently most people don't seem to know how to fix basic tech issues on their own. Despite everyone knowing Google is a thing. Just Google any error codes and see what can be done to remedy them. It isn't rocket science if you read the instructions. I first started doing my own tech support in the mid to late 90s, just basically opening things up and figuring out house and hardware work, and a lot of trial and error, and process of elimination. Using virtual desktops, win key and tab, add a second one, and then switch back and forth with control win right arrow and control win left arrow. 
It's not a computer skill per se, but effort when it comes to computer seems like it's miles below other areas. I still hear people, in an office setting, use the phrase I'm not good with computers. For one, it's 2021, these things haven't just popped up in the scene. And two, it's 2021, if you can't handle a computer, and BTW, in my field, nearly everything is done via computer, that's not just something you can excuse as a weak point, an ability to navigate PC basics is a core employee skill, it is not optional. How to move images in Microsoft Word without messing up the words, it's really easy, right click the image and select warp text, in front of text, and boom, your image can be moved freely without messing up your words. Closer program in a variety of ways. I'm a computer engineer and one of my co-workers didn't know that Alt and F foreclosed a program. When I got home I asked my 10 year old son what were the different ways to close a program. He said, click the X, file exit, Alt and F4, right click from the task bar, end task from task manager. I taught him well. I always find it weird how many young people in the 20s, my age, only knows the basics of their installed word processor or spreadsheet programs on their laptop, like most programs is so user friendly and have many practically features. I find a lot of younger people, like early 20s and below, don't know how to do really basic things on a computer because they were raised on smartphones and tablets where everything is so simplified. I volunteered in a team graphic design class a few years ago and the number of kids who would panic thinking their projects were gone because they weren't in the recent items drop down anymore and they didn't know how to search or use folders in. The OS was crazy. I think adults assume kids naturally know everything about tech now so they don't bother teaching them basic stuff like that. Honestly, typing. I mean, I work in a blue collar factory job, so typing isn't a necessary skill. But co-workers have commented on my ability to type more than once. It struck me that there are actually a lot of people who never learn to type properly. How PDFs work. That you can combine them. Or split them. Someone I work with, when needing to combine PDFs, will print them all out and then scan them all together. Or, when needing to split a PDF, will print the pages needed and scan them. Windows plus Control plus D to create a new virtual desktop. Windows plus Control plus F4 to close current virtual desktop. Windows plus Control plus left right to switch virtual desktop. Open the task manager. Not to mention browser task managers. My life changed the day I discovered browsers have their own task manager and now I use it daily. For anyone curious, here's how you get to it on Chrome Firefox Edge. 3 dots lines in upper right comma more tools comma task manager. Think this is labeled browser task manager on edge. Here are a few things I do with it. I don't even limit my use of browser task manager to problem scenarios. I check it several times during browsing sessions for maintenance. Resource management. Are there any memory leaks is a tab or extension taking up more resources than it apparently should? And why are there any tabs you want to keep on your tab deck but still want to kill to free up resources? Subframe and service worker transparency. What's running in the background in subframes is it taking up more resources than it should? Are there any unwanted service workers hanging around after you've closed their parent pages? Is there anything predatory? Are there any repeat offenders? You want to add to your filter list? Ability to target snipe specific issues. It used to be that if your browser slowed down or glitched out, you'd restart the browser if you couldn't pinpoint the problem. Task manager makes it easy to just kill the problem tab or subframe, making your browser run smoothly instantly without a full browser restart. I teach web design at the college level. Used to teach community weekend workshops. HTML and CSS with some expected knowledge of computer basics. Local workforce development group would enroll people to update their skills, but would never actually check for prior knowledge. Had to teach how to hold a mouse. That right click meant use the right mouse button. Had to teach how to open and save files. That the web was not loaded onto a computer and that you needed to connect to the internet first. Not a lot of actual HTML taught some weekends, which was a shame for those who really wanted to learn. Waste of time for everyone. I started sharing curated resources for web design. 
started pointing people to a basic inter to computer class that should be taken before mine. Kept making requests to have someone vet the students before putting them in my class. Finally gave up when I had a student who wanted to use her ancient flip phone so she could take work with her. No internet on the thing so made her use her a school computer. She got pissy when something wasn't working. Turns out she was trying to go online with Windows Calculator. No idea how she even got there. She eventually went ballistic when the code she typed in her email wouldn't work again. Wanted to save the work to take with her. I have almost eternal patience, but couldn't take an irate woman screaming in my face because AOL email won't work for writing code. The class was supportive and I patiently let her leave early. I decided teaching those weekend workshops weren't with it after that. Man that sucks. I feel terrible for anyone in those classes who actually wanted to learn HTML and CSS. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.